Welcome to MH2801 video segment on the integral representation of the direct delta function. Consider the, consider the Fourier transform of the direct delta function which is defined by 1 over square root 2 pi an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity the direct delta function localized at t naught multiplied by the e exponent, complex exponential ei omega t and then integrated over dt now we because this is a direct delta function it's very easy to evaluate this particular integral and this is simply uh, for direct delta function localized at t naught what you would do is you would look out for other functions of t in the, in the integrand and you realize that it is just e i omega t and then you replace t by t naught and that is how you would integrate uh, in the presence of a direct delta function so what we would get would be 1 over square root 2 pi e i omega t naught so this is the Fourier transform of the direct delta function. But at the same time, we also know that the direct delta function, the direct delta function, delta t minus t naught, is given in terms of its uh, it's given in terms of the Fourier transform by the inverse Fourier transform, which is 1 over square root 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity delta twiddle of omega e minus i omega t minus omega t d omega so the important thing to note is that this here we have the Fourier transform where we use the normalization constant, uh, we use normalization convention of 1 over square root 2 pi as well as the plus sign, the plus uh, con sign convention for the complex exponential and this particular integral down here, although it looks like a Fourier transform, it is actually the inverse Fourier transform okay, depending on your convention okay, we can tell that this is the inverse Fourier transform because it has a minus sign in the complex exponential. So if the Fourier transform has a plus sign in the complex exponential, then you need to change the sign to minus in the inverse Fourier transform. Alternatively, if the sign of the Fourier transform is e minus i omega t, then this will be e i omega t. But of course, we should only use one convention in any given problem. So here we have we we're going to stick to this particular convention of plus i omega t for the Fourier transform and minus i omega t for the inverse Fourier transform. Now, what do we do next? Okay, what we do next is to substitute in delta twiddle of omega into the inverse Fourier transform, and we will find that we get one over square root two pi. An integral and 1 over square root 2 pi e i omega t naught and then multiply by e minus i omega t d omega okay so we can bring the 1 over square root 2 pi outside multiply it with the 1 over 2 square root 2 pi that is already outside to get 1 over 2 pi the integral stays from minus infinity to infinity and then we can rearrange, we can combine the two complex exponentials to make it read as such i minus i omega t minus t naught d omega so this expression that we have just written down is the integral representation of the direct delta function okay this is the integral representation of the direct delta function. Now I've told you that um, the this plus and minus is a question is a, merely a question of convention. So you could also have a plus here. So and whether you use the plus or the minus uh, the, the final the final 
result should be the same, and that is uh, whether you are using the plus convention or the minus convention, you still end up with uh, the integral uh, 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of a exponential e i omega t minus t naught d omega. This is also a valid integral uh, formula for the direct delta function. And uh, the only thing that we need to take note of, only thing that we need to take note of is this uh, factor of t minus t naught that is multiplied to omega is precisely what should appear in the direct delta function.